Hello again all. Today I thought we'd look at the origins of a rhyme about a little girl who sat on a tuffet. Whatever a tuffet is. But whose lunch snack was spoiled by the arrival of a spider. What's the history of the rhyme? Who was Miss Muffet? Is there a hidden meaning behind the rhyme? And how has the rhyme changed the dictionary? Well, the rhyme as we know it today goes like this. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. There came a big spider who sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. The size of the spider seems to have varied over time, from a small spider, which I suppose might have been a bit of a shock, to some seriously large spiders, which would certainly have made me drop my bowl and spoon and run for the hills. So let's dive in and see what it's all about. The oldest version of the rhyme was first published by Benjamin Tabbert, a London bookseller in 1805, in a collection called Songs for the Nursery, which, alongside Tommy Thumb's Pretty Songbook, Mother Goose's Melodies, and Gamma Girton's Garland, was one of the first English nursery rhyme anthologies. These early publications were designed for children as a sort of throwaway gift or booklet, with very poor etchings, as seen here with Ladybird, Ladybird, in fact, there's no known copy of Volume 1 of Little Tommy Thumb's songbook, so have a look in your attics. Songs for the Nursery was different, a much more lavish production with higher quality drawings, particularly after it was reprinted in the finely illustrated version in 1818. It remained in print until the 1860s. Unfortunately, the early versions didn't include an illustration of Little Miss Muffet. So who wrote about Miss Muffet and her tuffet? Well, Songs for the Nursery was anonymous. It had become a tradition to attribute children's verse to pseudonyms, hence Mother Goose and Gamma Girton, and the case of Pretty Tommy Thumb, Nurse Lovechild. Songs for the Nursery poked fun at the idea that children's rhymes were a low-brow form of literature, written by nursemaids. It used the subheading, Collected from the Works of the Most Renowned Poets. It seems likely it was compiled by Eliza Fenwick. Fenwick was an author of children's books, but she certainly knew some of the leading female authors of the age, such as Mary Wollstonecraft, and I suspect she was aware of Anne and Jane Taylor. Jane was the author of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, which was published just one year after Songs for the Nursery. However, it seems unlikely that Eliza Fenwick actually wrote Little Miss Muffet, and it might have predated the 1805 publication by as much as 50 years. Little Miss Muffet and her Tuffet was just one of a number of songbook characters with alliterative names. There was Polly Flinders, who sat on the cinders, as well as little Tommy Tucker singing for his supper, and little Jack Horner, who sat in the corner, which I've done a video about. But if we look past the alliterative qualities of the name, was Miss Muffet a real person? There's lots of speculation as to who she might have been, which is exactly the type of fun we like on this channel. The most common theory is that Miss Muffet was Miss Patience Muffet, the daughter of Dr. Thomas Muffet, or Moffet, an expert on creepy crawlies and specifically silkworms, working in the late Tudor and early Stuart period, around 1600. This opens up the intriguing possibility that as an expert on silkworms, he was consulted when Elizabeth I and James I introduced mulberry bushes to England as a way of creating a domestic silk industry. Silkworms live on mulberry bushes, as I discuss in my video, Here We Go Round the Mulberry Bush. I've added a link above. It's amazing how so many of these rhymes seem to link to one another. Dr. Muffet's academic inquiries then shifted from silkworms to arachnids, and particularly spiders, and the theory goes that this biologist also wrote a short poem about his own daughter, meeting one of his spidery research specimens. So is there any truth in this theory? Well, firstly, there's a 200-year gap between the death of Dr. Muffet, or Moffat, in 1604, and the first publication of the rhyme in 1805, so it would have to have been passed through word of mouth through the whole of this period. I suppose that is possible. The other issue is that Dr. Muffet was not exactly the most famous Tudor biologist, and I'm not sure an unpublished rhyme about his daughter eating what is basically cottage cheese would have survived unaltered for 200 years. And surely Miss Patience Muffet would have spent lots of time around spiders and been quite familiar with them, given her dad studied them, so would have thought the rhyme should have run, along came a spider and sat down beside her, and Miss Muffet was perfectly happy with that state of affairs. There is another theory put forward by the ever-imaginative Catherine Elwes Thomas, and as were the other theories, see Jack and Jill and Three Blind Mice, she suggests the rhyme is a clandestine way of discussing Tudor royalty. This time, Miss Muffet is Mary Queen of Scots, and the spider terrorising her is the firebrand reformer John Knox. 
As ever with Elwes Thomas, there's no evidence the rhyme is this old or connected with the Protestant Reformation in Scotland, but I suppose it's fun to speculate. So what about a lunchtime snack of choice, curds and whey? Well, curds are a byproduct of coagulating milk. Coagulation happens when you add an acid like lemon juice or vinegar to milk. The increase in acidity causes the milk protein to tangle together into solid masses. After the curds are formed, they're pressed and drained, and the liquid that's left over is called whey. Curds and whey is just cottage cheese in its purest form. However, this may not be exactly what Miss Mufford enjoyed on her tuffet. Modern cottage cheese is washed, salted and drained. Cream is usually added for modern tastes. The curds and whey of the 18th and 19th century was almost certainly more tart, and I'm not sure the spider would have enjoyed it at all. And so we come to the burning question of what is a tuffet, and the power of nursery rhymes to change the English language. There's some speculation of what a tuffet is when you look at the illustrations. They seem divided on the issue. Either it's a small grassy mound or a hillock, which is what I was brought up to think it was, or it could be a stool or hassock. So let's explore. The Oxford English Dictionary is pretty unequivocal that a tuffet comes from the word tuft, meaning a mound of grass. It quotes the scientist Robert Boyle, writing in 1692, long before the nursery rhyme was written down, and he states, and I quote, that it emerged from the ground like tuffets of rushes. So why are the pictures of little girls falling off stools? Well, the good people at the dictionary speculate that it may be a misunderstanding. On hearing the rhyme, but being unfamiliar with the word tuffet, people have assumed that a tuffet is a milking stool, given that she's eating curds and whey. To be fair, I think this makes some sense. But what's amazing is the rhyme has actually changed the definition in the dictionary. So a tuffet has three definitions. The first being a tuft, the second the tuffet being a hillock or a mound, and the third being a stool or hassock. In their notes, the Oxford English Dictionary directly attribute this third definition to a misunderstanding of the nursery rhyme. Let me know in the comments if you grew up thinking a tuffet was a hill or a stool. So that's the story of Little Miss Muffet and her tuffet. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, I'll see you again soon for more deep dives into the meaning of nursery rhymes. Bye for now.